it's an arch production. This is a 9mm round, weighing roughly 7 grams. The bullet that fired flies over 330 meters per second and is able to penetrate not that much, but still a little bit. The bullet is shot by many different weapons, like the MP5, one of the most iconic weapons in gaming, always comfortably sitting in the SMG category. In most games, the MP5 is able to kill an opponent in 4 to 5 shots, and combined with the fast fire rate and high mobility, the weapon makes for a great tool for the Vernon Gunner. Now, the keen ones among you might have noticed that this is in fact not a pistol, and that me telling you this has nothing to do with the topic of this video. But does it really? Let's take the bullet out of the MP5's chamber and put it into the M9 Beretta, also known as one of the most iconic weapons in gaming. We know that shooting this cartridge means we need 4 to 5 shots to kill an opponent. So if we put someone with the M9 Beretta in front of an enemy that has the MP5, the M9 Beretta will always lose because its fire rate is just way too slow. What? That doesn't make any sense. It's shooting the exact same cartridge, yet this small thing somehow amplified its damage to almost double? That has to be an oversight, right? But then again, why is the damage suddenly horrible when I put the bullet into a Glock, needing like a bazillion bullets to kill an opponent? And if we are going to talk about pistols anyway, why do so many games get revolvers wrong? There are so many inconsistencies and balancing issues with handguns in gaming in general. Why can't they just be like real life? Why do we have to stuff those weapons away in the secondary slot instead of primaries? And why oh why can some pistols one-shot an opponent in the head while other larger cartridges guns can't? So many questions and so many different handguns to cover. So grab yourself a snack, make yourself comfortable and enjoy the show. The four main categories of handguns and those I will cover are semi-automatics, automatics, revolvers and the oddities, like the flintlock pistol or let's be crazy and say the flare gun. Under the semi-automatics would be the Glock, 1911 and even the Desert Eagle. Under automatics you can also find the Glock and the CZ. You can also find this, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Finally, under revolvers, we can find the single and double action cowboy guns, and there's also the shotgun revolver. The first question we have to tackle is, what is a handgun? According to the all-knowing, also known as ChatGPT, a handgun is a firearm designed to be operatable single-handedly. Weird, because you have to use both hands to reload or pull the slide on your weapon, but we won't question our future oppressors. Here is where it gets even weirder. What classifies as a pistol? Is this a pistol? This? How about this one? Well, this one isn't, this weapon isn't one either, but the third one actually is a pistol if we ask America. As long as the barrel is under 16 inches, the gun has a pistol brace and not a stock, which here is the difference, and as long as you have an angled grip and not a vertical grip, then this is classified as a pistol? And this on its turn is classified as a short-barreled rifle? God bless America, fellas. I hope this clarifies why this is also an automatic pistol. Before we can dive into balancing different kind of pistols, revolvers and whatever, we first have to balance those gun categories as a whole. Think about it. In my previous weapon balancing videos, I tackled one kind of weapon category at a time, aka basically this part of what we are going to cover today. It's ambitious, I know, but it's kind of hard to just talk about Glocks and 1911s without including Cowboy Desert Eagles. And if I talk about those anyway, why won't I just talk about the rest as well? So, what is the purpose of handguns in the game we play or want to make? Do we want pistols to be a weak backup tool or a reliable weapon? It's important to have a clear picture in mind before we take the deep dive. Think about Counter-Strike for a minute. CS2 is an economy-based shooter. Both teams rack up money for things they do, and with that money they can buy bigger and better guns. When it comes to balancing, developers of economy-based shooters have a kind of get-out-of-jail-free card. If a weapon they made turned out horrible, they just lower the price and call it a day. If it is OP, then vice versa. This approach works, I guess, but it also confuses me, because the Desert Eagle is considerably better than an M249. Yet for the price of that LMG, we can buy 7 birds. 
In general, economy-based shooters are, in at least my opinion, almost unbalanceable. It doesn't matter how good, bad or unrealistic a weapon is. In the end, what really matters is the price tag associated with it. I unfortunately didn't study economics, so I won't be focusing on the price tag part of our balancing journey. Additionally, we have hero-based shooters. Every character is different, and their kit usually is as well. A fast, squishy character usually gets stronger weapons, and in return tanky characters get the weaker ones. Here as well, it is difficult to balance those weapons as a wall. The strength and impact of one of those characters doesn't solely depend on the weapon they use. It's a combination of their speed, abilities, and how they use those weapons that defines whether something needs balancing. The Spy in Team Fortress 2 has a completely unrealistic revolver that does horrible damage. Yet, it's balanced because the character is a made to run and gun into a building. He's supposed to sneak around, stab people in the back, and only shoot when things go south. The character Chamber in Valorant has a revolver that is basically a pocket sniper. But this gun is balanced because it takes up an ability slot, has a limited number of bullets, and because the opponents can buy their own pocket sniper. Though theirs is a tiny bit worse and without a scope. It's the little things around the weapons that make or do not make a weapon balanced. For this reason, I will also try to stray away from hero-based shooters as much as I can. This leaves us with the pick or find a weapon games. And here is why I'm also going to shine. The main way developers balance handguns versus other guns is as follows. Copy the stats from the DMR, remove the range, add a little bit of movement speed and done. A completely new weapon. Definitely not a reskinned marksman rifle. Let's be honest, that's a boring approach. Handguns are some of the most amazing and satisfying weapons to use in gaming. And this is how we make them playable? Nah, we gotta do more for the little bros. Allow me to suggest how I would balance them. If we are free to choose whatever gun we want or can find, why do we usually go for non-handguns? Why can't we make the pistol a viable thing? I guess the best way to answer this question is by looking at Tarkov. From all the shooters I've played, Tarkov, aside from their horrible recoil changes and stupid scaffs, is one of the most realistic shooters I have ever played. Their weapon damage system is exactly like a lot of people enjoy. It works like this. Every bullet has a damage and a penetration stat assigned to it, and within each caliber are different kind of versions of them that massively change how much the caliber penetrates and how much damage it does. For example, let's bring back the 9mm from the intro. In Tarkov, there are 9 variants of this bullet, and usually the game follows the balancing rule of the more it penetrates, the less damage it does, which it also does here. If you're wondering how they justify this to being realistic, they argue that if a bullet overpenetrates, it does less damage internally than if it would catch and defragment in your opponent's body. Honestly, that's a really realistic approach. Though this is just a 9mm round, I'm not too sure it can even penetrate a body at all. Anyway. Between all these 9mm rounds is, for example, the rib round, made to do maximum damage to a person, though it can't penetrate anything. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the PBB GZH, doing half the damage of what the rib round would do, but being able to penetrate up to level 3 tier armor pretty easily. Personally, I really enjoy this weapon damage system, as you really have to think about how you want to use your weapon. If you load it up with rip rounds, don't aim for the chest, as it doesn't penetrate the body in the slightest. Instead, you would have to aim for the arms or the legs to ensure maximum damage. Because of this, this pistol and this pistol are completely different, and serve completely different purposes. And you know what? Just like in the intro, let's also bring back the MP5 and the pistol, which Tarkov obviously has as well. And lucky for us, they also shoot this exact caliber. Now, unlike in games that aren't Tarkov, the pistol's DPS output and fire rate are both just worse than the MP5's. It also doesn't have any range benefit or movement speed multiplier to the pistol, it has nothing. The pistol just sucks. But then again, if your goal for your game is for it to be as realistic as possible, then yeah. There is so much we can do for any kind of handgun approach, if we want them to be as viable as the other weapons. In realistic games, pistols will always be a bad option. Right? Not exactly. The American audience and the airsofters that are watching this probably already know where I'm going. Have you ever held a fully fledged M4 for 30 minutes in an active shooting range or scrim? That stuff gets really tiresome. 
The average pistol weighs around 700 grams, while a fully fledged M4 weighs around 3500 grams instead. I know, that doesn't sound too bad. But in practice, you will notice it does get heavy due to the balancing point of non-pistols. A handgun fits perfectly in your hand, while an M4 for example, always wants to tip forward due to the balancing point. Which means in reality, it weighs more than just 3.5 kilos. You could aim a pistol all day without your arms getting tired, while any other gun, especially the bigger ones, get really heavy the longer you hold them. Additionally, operating a pistol like the also mighty ChatGPT have told us can be done with one hand. Think about the possibilities for a moment that we can create for the players if we allow them to customize how they want to use their other hand. We can have them wield a knife like in the old Call of Duty games or a flashlight. We can also be fun and allow the player to have maybe some kind of tactical phone with real-time information or something. If you really want your game to be realistic, then you shouldn't have a HUD, right? So then a phone like this could be some handy stuff. And that's not where the benefits of a pistol stops. Opening doors is a lot faster with a hand free, and so is shooting around corners. No need to expose your body and your shoulder if you can just poke your hand around the corner instead. If companies really want to have realistic combat built into their game, they have to start thinking less confined to the established FPS genre, and think more outside of the box. Handguns can very well be a primary and a solid weapon. And if you really start to think about it, like really, really, if you had to classify a handgun to a certain kind of player or playstyle, it would hands down be the ideal weapon for a support player, rather than a backup one for everyone else. You have to pick someone up who just got downed? Do it while slaughtering enemies. Makes it more fun and intense at the same time. Are you the black sheep in the family and do you have to carry the objective back every time? Easily done with one hand free. The list goes on and on and on. Depending on how complex your realistic game is, a handgun could almost be overpowered, yet it is the weakest. Honestly, right? If you are a developer and want to dive into realism, you have to try this approach out. I promise you, it will revolutionize your game for the support players among us. Pistols, revolvers and whatever are just weaker. It's just how it is. But by adding all these small touches that I just covered, they can instead be stronger. If a player chooses a handgun, offer them customization in the term of how do you want to use your left hand? If they don't want anything, reward them with better recoil control as it's easier to counter it with two hands on your gun. By the way, right? How about this customization, huh? What, you thought I wouldn't mention them today? Of course I won't forget the akimbo option. And here as well, let's try to make it as fun as possible. Do you want to akimbo your weapon? Be my guest. Each handgun gets normal recoil, so no need for shenanigans with any of that. And you are free to choose which handgun you want to be as your secondary. You want to play the Glock and the USB at the same time? Sure. You want to play the Glock and revolver at the same time? Sure. You want to play the Glock and the flintlock at the same time? Sure, do whatever you want, buddy. You are the one in control. We need to stop limiting the creativity and the freedom of the players. Allow them to customize their weapon and their playstyle to their own extent. That way, people can really find their place in your game. It's so, so important. Anyway, that's the first part of our balancing journey done. Now it's time to balance the difficult stuff. Time to balance the semis, automatics, revolvers and the oddities between each other. The established formula of the handguns is as follows. Semi-automatic pistol, weak damage, weak fire rate, but you move fast with it and the recoil is minimal. For automatics, it's basically the SMG, but suddenly the recoil is horrible and so is the damage and range? Even though they often use the same caliber as other submachine guns, but we already spoke about that. Revolvers are glorified desert eagles, but the bad desert eagles. Damage about 70% and the fire rate being horrible, not to mention the recoil. At least the range is unrealistically high. Finally, we have the oddities like the flintlock, often seen as a joke weapon by the developers, which is really just a shame. The damage is 99% because why not? And the fire rate is super duper slow. Range and everything else is all around the place because extreme equals funny, I guess? This is how the usual handguns are balanced in games. For comparison, this is the AR, SMG, Sniper and Shotgun instead. Now, which ones would you rather take? Unless you are trying to be different, you won't be picking any of the handguns. Maybe that's fine. 
Maybe we want the handguns to be backup tools. But personally, I wouldn't mind an additional weapon category to pick from. Do I think that being able to one-hand the guns and have this additional interaction speed with everything else is enough for the handguns to be balanced? Not really. Even in games like Call of Duty, where they still clearly try to make handguns a viable primary, they still feel underwhelming and underpowered. Unless you akimbo them like shotguns, I guess. Plus, what if your game doesn't have interactables? Then that wall benefit is gone and we are back to zero. We need to do more for our one-handed friends to make them feel special. And I think the best way to do that is by looking at a couple games and study how they are used in there. What treatment do pistols and revolvers exactly get? And when do players actually use the pistol? And most importantly, what is the handgun's job compared to the rest? The first game I want to delve into to figure out these questions is Enlisted, which is also today's sponsor. To the folks at Enlisted, I hope you are okay with me being honest about your guns. So, because the game is a historical shooter, they don't feature 5.7s or Desert Eagles of impressive calibers, but they do offer other pistols and even some revolvers. But honestly, they all fall short. Not in a bad way, but rather in a it's accurate to its time manner. Handguns during World War II weren't that great, and because the game aims for realism, they, well, reflect that accurately. If you had to choose between a gun that can instantly kill someone at any range, or a pistol that only carries 7 bullets, needing 3 to take down an opponent, you would probably stick with the instant killing one. I've also noticed that when you encounter someone and manage to eliminate them, there is a high chance you will get instantly pulled into the next engagement. How? Well, in Enlisted, you're not just playing as a singular soldier, you control an entire squad. So if you jump into a gunfight with a pistol, hit all your shots and kill your opponent, you and your half-empty pistol might find yourself in a disadvantage when your former opponent re-emerges fully armed from around the corner. With all of this in mind, if you aim to be a fancy gunslinger, your headshot game has to be on point. Otherwise, be ready for a brand new soldier about to revenge his fallen comrade by unloading their STG-44 into you. Additionally, there is one more argument why in realistic games, such as Enlisted, handguns are more a backup tool than a go-to weapon. The maps. They are massive. Don't get me wrong, that's a cool thing and personally, I love to play on big maps. But when you are wielding a handgun, that massive map suddenly feels 10 times as big. In close quarter areas with ample of opportunity to escape, handguns can definitely be useful as a last resort defense tool. But in a huge open combat area, where you will spend most of your time, you would feel extremely ineffective with a pistol, and would once again much rather rely on your primary gun. I really only found myself using a pistol when my main gun was out of ammo. Or when I was in a tank, I guess, shooting enemies from my commander's cupola. You can easily tell that the game designers intended secondaries to be a last resort weapon, rather than a primary damage dealer. Which, don't get me wrong, is a valid approach for games aiming at realism. If you try to slay entire armies with just this small pea shooter, you might find your KD dropping faster than your magazine's capacity. What I will say about Enlisted is that it's a very unique game that mixes PvE and PvP combat all together. As mentioned before, you can take control of customizable AI soldiers and strategize for your team to get the win against hundreds of other targets led by other players. Additionally, the game is free to play. You wouldn't have guessed that from all the clips i just shown you, did you? Enlisted offers multiple campaigns to play through that offer their own unique weapons, vehicles and equipment from the outskirts of Moscow in 1941 to the hearts of Berlin in 1945. The game has an incredible amount of details and the graphics are really really good. Plus it offers over 400 weapons, tanks and aircraft. So my lovely viewers, if you would be happy to support the channel and like the look of Enlisted, use the link in the description to download the game for free on PlayStation, Xbox and PC. You will also get a free bonus pack including a helmet, multiple weapons, 4000 silver and 3 days of a premium account. Thanks for listening to the sponsor segment. Alright, so on big maps, pistols are not it. And against big groups of enemies, where you need to be able to put many bullets down range rapidly or you will get refracked, the handguns, once again, fall off. Moving on, the game I have the most experience in and also hate with a passion. Rainbow Six Siege. Even though I don't like the game anymore, I always ran into an odd occurrence when playing it. 
This is the PMM, a Russian pistol for the Russian operators. The pistol does a whopping 63 damage per shot. And with even the most armored operators only having a max 125 HP health, you can down them with just two taps. As a comparison, this massive LMG does only 35 damage. Almost half of this eeny tiny teeny thing. I don't know what Russians put on their pistols, but this is just way, way too overpowered. Is what you would think. In reality, no one uses it and much rather opts in for their main weapon. The same story goes for revolvers. Here is Alibi. She has a main weapon that shoots really fast but does only 26 damage per bullet. In her secondary slot though, she can wield one of those that does a massive 78 damage per shot. Three times as much damage than her Storm SMG. And no, this revolver does not shoot slow at all. Look at this. Not to mention, no recoil at all. And if that wasn't enough, it can even leave huge holes for you to peek through. This weapon as well though, is barely getting used. On paper, that makes no sense. Why use a main weapon that does way less damage, if you have a weapon that can two-tap any opponent? Well, there are actually quite a lot of reasons why you generally don't go for pistols. First of all, in Siege headshots, insta-kill someone. It doesn't matter if your weapon does 50, 20 or 1 damage per shot, if you hit someone in the head, they die. Because of this, it's generally preferred to have a weapon that shoots fast and does little damage over a weapon that hits slower but does more damage, aka the handguns in Siege. Secondly, pistols and revolvers have a steep damage falloff, with both handguns losing a whopping 50% of the damage if you hit someone that's further than 22 meters away, rendering them basically useless. Though Siege is usually a close-range gunfight game, it's still important to be able to do good damage on long range. And here as well, it's better to use your main gun than a pistol that falls off so quickly. This on its own ties in with the fact that pistols aren't magnified. Almost every gun has a magnified scope available to glue on, but all handguns, aside from one, do not benefit from that. That might not look like too big of a deal, but personally, I am a big supporter of scoped weapons. This is the hitbox of someone when you ADS with a non-magnified weapon. Seems pretty normal. But this is the hitbox of someone when you ADS with a magnified weapon. Practically twice if not more as big. And if you glue a scope on a fast firing gun that has not too much recoil, having someone's head twice as big makes killing opponents never easier again. On your left, you will see another reason why pistols aren't preferred by the players. Here is our opponent. You see him? How about now? Rough right? Now, if we were to hold a normal gun with a standard sight, you would still see him. There he goes. In Siege, when you clear a room, at least if you are experienced, you always do it on head level. If you don't, you will miss out on free one-taps. The thing is, if someone is waiting for you in this room, they are most likely using cover to conceal most of their body. Meaning if we do our professional clearing, we would not spot the enemy as fast as we normally would. Of course, we can counter this by just always looking a bit lower. After all, we are going for body shots anyway, with our high damage handguns. But even his body level on its own turn heavily changes depending on the distance and verticality that you have. In general, a huge part of your screen gets blocked by your pistol. This is also why the CZ in Siege, that is fully automatic, has a big extended mag and does more damage than almost all SMGs, plus even has a higher fire rate than most of them, doesn't get used that very often. It's just so hard to see what's in front of you. In Siege, there are pistols that have scopes on them, making it way easier to go for nice one-taps and aim for head level anyway. But those all have a horrible DPS output removing the only reason why we might go for pistols in the first place. And the one pistol that does have a huge scope and still some good damage, has really annoying recoil and requires 3 shots to kill all but the lightly armored opponents, once again rendering it redundant. The fifth reason why handguns are generally less played is the lack of customization. Players tend to play whatever they enjoy the most. And with a modification system, they are able to customize a weapon to their own specific needs. But sadly on the handguns, all you can customize is if you want less recoil, a suppressor, and if you want a laser sight. That's quite boring. The final reason why they are less played is that we have the Marsen Siege, with damage as high as the handguns. 
though, funnily enough, less than revolvers and the highest damage pistols? Nice Ubisoft moment. Not to mention, you can pick any scope in the game on those weapons. And they also have less recoil than pistols, more range and more magazine capacity, making it ideal for quickly killing people in the body and long range engagements. Perhaps even more ideal for replacing a pistol. Those six reasons are why handguns in Siege, and I would almost argue that in gaming in general, are lackluster. Body shots aren't rewarding. Damage falloff is insane. They aren't magnified. They block a huge part of your view. Aren't very customizable. And if you do like to play single tap weapons with high damage, why don't you just play the DMR? Moving on to something completely new to the weapon balancing series. Let's take a look at a PvE game. Ready or not? Though the game doesn't have DMRs, it does have a lot of handguns. How do the developers balance them if they don't have to think about how the people on the receiving end will feel about it? Well, almost exactly the same as if it were a PvP game. There is no insane damage drop-off or something, but there's also nothing that makes the pistol a more worthwhile weapon to use than a P90 for example. In this clip, I managed to pop some terrorists. But once again, with some more difficulty due to not being able to see well without a scope. But then I noticed another thing a semi-automatic weapon lacks. The panic factor. As I opened this door, I was jumped by not one, but two guards who I only managed to kill by spraying praying. Being able to shoot a lot of bullets down range by simply holding left mouse button is crazy useful when you're panicking. It's also just nice when taking out a singular person. Surely one of those 10 bullets I just emptied on him managed to hit his head. If a weapon has random spread when hip firing, or just always randomness in general, you are more likely to hit someone's head if you shoot 5 bullets per second than if you would shoot only 1 per second, aka a semi-automatic pistol. So what can we add on the board here that we learned from Ready or Not? I guess it's more that we learned the benefits from not playing a pistol rather than something about the pistol itself. Handguns are not great for the panic factor. Being semi-automatic means you have to carefully line up each shot before you shoot. And combined with the small magazine, it makes for a bad weapon to panic fire with. Additionally, you have less... how do I say this? Luck. Do you guys remember that math question we all had to face during high school about the probability of grabbing the red colored ball from a jar of blue balls? No pun intended. The more times you try grabbing the red one, the higher chance you escape your blue ball's destiny. From reviewing those three games, I guess we got a pretty solid idea of the strength and weaknesses that handguns have, with them mainly just being bad in way too many ways. I am genuinely struggling to find a viable solution for handguns for them to be in the primary slot. The only thing we can do is try to make every pistol as basically an odd variant of the existing primary weapons. The semi-automatic pistol would have to be a close-range DMR like most games already do, while automatic pistols would have to be like an extreme version of the Chris Factor, fast fire rate, little damage, horrible range and even smaller ammo capacity. Revolvers would have to be like Chambers pistol, one shot in the head on any range and needing many bullets in the body to kill, making the revolver a weapon only to be used for skilled players. Kind of a shame really. The oddities like a flintlock can, well, like what I already said before, basically be an almost one hit weapon. If I'm trying to be optimistic here, I guess it's already a lot better than what most games already do if we take these approaches. And to make it slightly better, we can make it so the players are able to mod the pistol to at least fit a scope on it and other attachment stuff. On top of that, we can make it so they all have a pretty tight hip factor, making it at least somewhat distinctive. And to say cherry on top, it also has this one-handed interaction bonus. All of this will probably be enough to make it a viable primary slot. But as you might already know, I'm not a big fan of unrealistic changes to a weapon. But if you really, really want the handgun to be a primary weapon, then here you go, I guess? Okay, I made up my mind. In my honest opinion, handguns should be secondaries. But maybe we need to stop linking secondaries with being a bad weapon. Why don't we make them as a solid, quote-unquote, worse version of already existing primary weapons? Surely you guys played a sniper before and were like, man, I wish I had something good to protect myself with on close range. Or when you played a shotgun and you felt like you needed something for longer ranges when you cross a big field. Well, my good fellas, this is our opportunity to fix that. 
At the beginning of this video, I introduced a lot of different handguns. And for a good reason. Those weapons are basically the must-have variants in games. So let's reel them back in and let's make them viable secondaries without being too unrealistic. Starting with the Glock. Damage? 4 shots to kill. Fire rate? Okay. Range? Medium. Recall? Low. Mobility? High. Handling? Also high. And new to this weapon series due to popular demand, magazine capacity, which is also high. Though the damage here is definitely better than in most games where the Glock is shown, the high magazine capacity and low recoil make it a very noob-friendly gun. Next up, we have the 1911. But this could as well be any other good guy pistol that we see in games. Damage? 3 shots to kill. Fire rate? Just like the Glock. Range? Alright. Mobility? Still the same, it's a pistol. And the handling? Slightly slower than a Glock. And to make it distinctive, let's have it so the pistol can hold max 7 bullets. This makes it so your shots count a lot more. But also that you're able to kill an opponent with a singular headshot, which the Glock can't. Keeping the skill ceiling high, but making it difficult to kill multiple people due to your low weapon capacity. Now, for the Desert Eagle, I had a lot of trouble balancing it. To the point, I almost wanted to remove the weapon entirely. Desert Eagles and Revolvers always share a spot together, and are both basically the one-shot headshot machine. But I'm not a big fan of weapons being the same, I want every single one of them to be distinctive. Because of that, I'm going to change the Revolvers ever so slightly. I will get back to that in a minute, so before you start to write hateful fanfiction about me and your favorite tool, just hear me out for a little second. The Deagle will remain as the one-shot headshot machine, but there is a catch. I like the idea of pistols being able to dome people in the head with one click, just as all the assault rifles should do. But I don't like how it can both shut down people with one bullet and do a lot of damage to the body. So, my suggestion. Damage, two shots to kill. It's a deagle after all. Fire rate, medium, just like the 1911. And the range, good. But here it comes. Recoil, horrible. When you shoot a shot, your weapon needs a second or two to reset again. Spam the gun all you want in your moment of panic, but don't expect to hit much, unless luck is with you, of course. Though I want mobility to be high as it's a one-handed weapon, I feel like the handling of the Desert Eagle should be slower to punish those who try to push its luck. Moving to automatics. Should we have the automatic Glock have the same stats as the semi-automatic Glock? I'm going to side with realism over cartoon logic here and say it should have the same damage. Yet, even higher fire rate because it's automatic. To balance it though, I want to make the recoil really bad. In a bad way that, in close range, you will have no issue killing people quickly. Though slightly slower than an actual SMG. While on the longer ranges, it will be really hard to hit shots consecutively. The CZ on the other hand, will have a lot better recoil. But with a little evil twist. The pistol only has 8 rounds. It needs 4 bullets to kill and the fire rate is pretty good. The recoil is good as well. The range all right and mobility and handling, well, you know it, it's a pistol. The thing though, if you pick this gun, you only have two magazines. The one in the gun and the one in the front as a grip. Once you run empty on your first mag and you detach the front one to use it, the recoil will suddenly get a lot worse. So the first engagement, you will be pretty solid. The next one, maybe not so much. Okay, so we are back at this monstrosity, the American pistol. But let's be honest here, it's just a stupid AR, so bye bye. Okay then, the revolvers. We have the single action, double action and the shotgun revolver action thing. Let's do it like this. Single action revolvers shoot slower due to you needing an additional step to shoot. But they are going to do more damage because we are going to choose a bigger caliber revolver for the single action type. Damage, two shots in the body, and range, all right. Recoil, really good. It's not a sniper as in sniper sniper thing. It's more like a more manageable DMR that hits slower. Additionally, we have the double action revolver. It shoots faster, has lower damage, and the rest, well, you know it. It cannot one-shot opponents in the head, but you can do a lot of damage in the body. For both the revolvers, I would like to make it so it takes ages to reload, so your shots really count. Finally, well, we have the pocket shotgun. 
we grab the stats from the existing shotgun, reduce everything just a little bit, and here we have a weapon for absolute close range engagements. The flintlock is a one shot use thing. You shoot it, you can't reload it. But on extreme close range, you can one hit an opponent in the body. Though if you shoot the legs or arms, they won't die in one shot. The weapon is like a get out of jail free card, yet you can only use it once. The flare gun would be like a secondary flamethrower. If you hit someone, you do a little bit of damage, but they will burn to death unless they somehow extinguish themselves, like by jumping in water. This means you can also one hit opponents, but that isn't always a smart thing to do. First of all, you can still be killed by your opponent even if you hit them first, as they are on a timer. Secondly, the flare will be projectile based, which means it's not a hit scan weapon, which is really hard to hit with. Finally, you only have one shot. A fun tool which might be OP, but also might not be. This is how I would personally balance all the handguns. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to figure out a completely new thing for the handguns, as it would be too unrealistic, but I did manage to give an approach for the guns when they are in the primary weapon slot and for when they are secondary. I really enjoy handguns in gaming, and if you make it so they are just slightly worse primaries, but in the secondary slot, there is a valid reason to enjoy them, and we won't forget that we even have them equipped. Plus, picking a sniper no longer means you can't contest an objective that is in a closed building. You can just switch to your automatic Glock or a CZ-75. Now, before I tell you about my beautiful Patreon supporters, a gentle reminder that if you want to try out the Enlisted yourself, use the link in the description to download it for free on PlayStation, Xbox and PC. Where you will also get the free bonus pack, including a helmet, the multiple weapons, 4000 silver and 3 days of a premium account. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching the entirety of this lengthy video. Make 2024 a year that you will be proud of. And like always, please subscribe. Patreon shoutouts, here we go. Marcy38, my biggest and fattest Patreon, who I can't thank enough and will definitely hit the gym in 2024. Suts and Duds, who single-handedly defeated all the Stingrays to avenge Steve Irwin. Blue E68, who has been keeping an eye on me to inform the Chinese government of my disloyalty. Hurty Randall, who is literally a cow that has a cowboy hat and a small revolver. Richard F, where the F stands for friend and not something else, once again. And Z Derek, the big Tony in the Mafia that controls all the small Tonys. If you want to get a shout out yourself, you can find my Patreon in the description. And that's about it. See ya.